Hi everybody, I am Phil Canning and today you join me at Packington Fisheries. Today we're on Molens Lake, we're sat on Peg 46. This lake is also known as Moody Molens. Great sport sometimes, but also can be really uh, hard work and challenging, but it also can be really rewarding as well. Today I want to show you a few tactics of what I'll do, maybe match fishing or even pleasure fishing. We're still in current lockdown, so matches won't be starting until another month or so. Today we're out, it's mild, a bit of a breeze about. It's around about 13, 14 degrees, and we're going to be just showing you a few tactics on the pole and a few on the feeder. But also I want to talk to you a little bit about this lake as well and my experience of this lake over the years and my successes and the fish what's in this lake as well. So currently from a kid I've been coming to this fishery, fishing many of the different lakes here as well. From pleasure fishing from a kid, getting dropped off by my dad and also learning my way, starting the matches, being small matches and then even into 60, 70 people winter leagues. And I've had great success over the winters fishing here as well, plus open matches always a great turnout and also a good standard of angler. Local anglers are always hard to beat as well. New anglers come into the fishery sometimes can be a bit hard to work out, especially with the size of the lake as well. Molens is a big lake, 60 pegs on the lake. This type of lake isn't at every fishery. It's a different size lake, it's wide, the pegs are wide as well, you've got plenty of room between each angler. And there's a lot of different fish in this lake as well. F1 from a pound going up to well into double figures, carp going up to 20 pound, lots of different silvers, tents, skimmers, roach, rud, but the main target is the F1s. The F1s are a great size and you don't need many of them to build a big weight either. Through the winter months, catching F1s from, you might only need to catch three to five F1s an hour to get yourself a good 50, 70 pound weight. With F1s going up to six, seven pound, two or three an hour can be, be a great, great start to your match or just building your weight up towards that end of that last couple of hours. But today I'm going to show you a few different tactics. Last week we was near enough two inches of ice on this lake, and now today we're in 13, 14 degrees. It's a little bit unsure really what's going to happen today. We've got a lot of cold water melting and then a big, big rise in the temperatures. So we're going to show you a few different tactics, a bit of feeder fishing, and then a bit later today we do a bit of pole fishing as well. So normally, when I come to Packington, when we're fishing matches, I normally start my match on the feeder. There's lots of features along the far bank, reeds, a bit of bare bank, and also got a nice bit of depth as well. So most of my matches will normally start on the feeder before reverting back and then fishing the pole later on. I'm not saying fishing the pole short or, or starting on the pole is not a great tactic. It's just my preference of starting on the feeder and then hopefully looking for some of them better fish. The carp tend to stay across by the island. In the summer months you will catch the carp on the pole, but it's very rare you do catch carp on the pole here in the winter. A little bit unsure if this is a big F1 or a carp. Today we're fishing a ground bait method with dead maggots. It's looking like one of Molan's big F1s. It's looking close to five pound this F1 is. It's a big chunk of an F1. That's some of the quality F1s you can catch in Molens. So that was a nice start. First cast, five pound F1. What I want to talk to you about is why, the reasons why I picked fishing a method today. It's just, it just warmed up. What it is, I'm not sure at the moment if the fish are going to be right against the bank or just off the bank. So I've started off fishing ground bait. I don't want to start on pellets just yet. I don't want to give them too much feed. I just want to give them a, just a bit of an attractant. And all I've got on, on the uh, hook is two dead maggots. If I feel it might not be right, I could also do a mixture of pellets and ground bait. Or 
and maybe just neat pellets all on its own as well. Here at Packington it is fishery pellets, so enhancing your pellets as well or a bit of flavouring, that also can work. But today's choice is, is um, just grain batter maggots and then fishery pellets as well. With moulins, it's just like a snake lake, but it's not your normal traditional snake lake what's 13, 14 metres wide. This lake is anywhere between 30 metres to 40 metres wide in some areas. So fishing the method feeder is kind of like fishing the pole. I'm picking out different areas along the bank and trying to find them different depths as well, where the fish might be sitting. Today I've got some Norfolk reeds on one side of my peg and also got some nice flat, flat areas where I can get nice and tight to the bank. I won't just sit down one hole, I'll also move left and right. I'll have a couple of different rod setups as well today. I'll have one rod for the widest part of my peg, and then I'll have another rod setup as a searching rod. One I might go a bit left, go in front of the reeds. Just move around the peg. It's just kind of what you'd do fishing the pole, really. You wouldn't go to, on a snake lake, you'd plumb up different areas along the far bank, two or three different areas, different depths maybe as well. That's what I'm doing with the feeder. Just change, moving them different areas, moving along the bank. Also looking out for signs as well for fish. I also keep, when I'm fishing, fishing keeping my, my tip close to the water, any indication just gives me a sign that there's a few fish in the area. But if I haven't seen those signs, just move into that other area, keep an eye on your tip, look out for moving fish. The fish sometimes will tell you where they are, if it's close to the bank or just off the bank or there might be two or three fish jumping one area, but nothing over to the right or to the left. So just keep an eye out, keep an eye out on your tip, keep an eye out on the fish moving, and also keep an eye on the anglers around you. See what they're doing. Sometimes they can they can give you a head start to where to start fishing. If someone's starting really close to the bank or halfway across the lake or just off the far bank, that might give me my next step to where I'm going to start fishing then. See how quick that bite was? That's what I like about the method. They, they just attack it. Might only be a small F1 this might be, but with other tactics we use through the winter, fishing maggot feeder and stuff, sometimes the bites can be a bit slower. But when the, the ground bait's breaking up, it's just a lovely attractant. And that hasn't been in the water 30 seconds. But what I want to talk you through as well, some of the, the tackle I'm actually using. I'm using a 4000 reel, a 10 foot soft rod, nothing too heavy for these F1s and a mixture of catching carp as well. A one ounce tip. I choose a one ounce tip just so I can see some of these indications. It's a lovely F1 that is as well. I want to see the indications on the, with my tip so close to the water, if I've got fish in my peg, I just want to be able to, to know they're in my peg. With fishing a, a too heavy a tip, you just don't see them indications or getting the feel for knowing there's a few fish in your peg. Hook size and feeder size, small 20 gram method. Four inch hook length, fishery, insisting a four inch hook length, a 16 hook, not a too heavy hook, it's a nice size, wide gape 16 hook, and like I said it's just a six pound main line, that will cover you everything for this time of year now. Coming into the, the summer months, coming in past April, I will up, up things where I'd, I'd change the real line to an eight pound, mainly because there's some Norfolk reeds about, so when you catch some of the big carp, they all try to head to these uh, the reeds and try and get away from you, so you got to hold on tight then. So eight pound main line. And then I'll also up the, up the hook length then to 017 and maybe 019. You just don't want to go too heavy because these F1s are really crafty. 
you don't want to be you want a happy medium of being able to catch the carp and also the F1s. As you can see, that one in the water, 30 seconds again. Now they're really getting onto it now. Like I say, it's only last week, there's two inches of ice in this lake. But going back to finding the right spot, where to fish, I tend to always start in front of me. Never go outside your peg, start in front. And then you can also go left and right then. One of the new F1s, just under a pound. Which keep keeping you busy. These are the fish what add up, add up and make you big weights. Just picked up the pole now. I'm a little unsure of how the pole's going to react with the cameraman behind me and the change in the weather. I'm not sure if the fish are going to be in the deep water. This morning the feeder fishing was really good, so I'm expecting the fish not to be in this deep water. So the pole fishing could be a little bit, little, little bit tricky. I've had both pole lines at 14 and a half metres, quite positive, with a decent ball of ground and a good pinch of maggots. I'm going to go over the top now and just feed, just by a, a kinder pot, a good 20 maggots to start with, then see what goes on. I'm expecting to catch small roach to start with, and then I'm going to hopefully catch some uh, bigger F1s later on. I'm going to talk you through my rig now. The peg I'm on today is around about 7 foot deep, about 14 and a half metres. I've also got two lines going at 14 and a half metres, one left and one right, around about 11 o'clock one about two o'clock. But the rig I'm using today is just a 0.5 with a bulk around about 18 inches from the hook. Then I've got two droppers, two number 11 droppers. But then the bulk is number nine shots. I like to use shots just due to the finesse. Your rig just looks a lot tidier to using shots and stots. And also they don't move around on your line. So moving up from the rig, elastic choice is a four to six zip. You might think this is a bit light really for the, the fish I'm targeting, the F1s. But also in this lake there's loads of other fish. Small roach, perch, skimmers, tench. So I've also got to be able to land these other small fish as well. In match circumstances, I don't want to be losing these fish or bumping them off every, every time I go out. But also, if the fishing does get really good, and there ain't no roach to be caught or these small fish and it's just an F1 every chuck in. I'll up, I'll up the grade elastic and then I'll get these fish in and out a lot quicker. The pole fishing on Molens can be pretty tricky sometimes through the winter months. And there's little key key things to know about the lake. Going into the last hour when that light drops can be crucial. Being patient and just knowing when the fish are going to turn up. Matches over the, through the winter months, I've won loads of matches going into the last 45 minutes of the match with even five pound in the net. But as soon as that light level drops, around about two, half two, that's when these F1s in this lake come alive, especially on the pole lines and they can be the real big ones as well. And them are, the, them are the weight builders then. You can go into the last 45 minutes and catch yourself 10 F1s, and that could be anything up to 30 to 40 pound, or even more. So if in the first three or four hours, if you can just tick along, catching yourself a few fish on the feeder, or even plodding along, catching a few of these little roach or little bits and pieces on the pole, it'll all add up at the end and then you're waiting for that last final hour, and that can be the bumper hour then, and you've got to make the most of it when they turn up. So like I said, you might need to up the elastic in that last hour, because when them fish turn up, you've got to get them in and out quick, 
But also, you don't want to be losing, losing them at the same time. You want to get, catch them, make sure you land them all, and get out, get out there again, catch another one. Hook and line choice. I normally use an 18 hook, fine wire, to 09 or 010 hook lengths. Then my main line's 013. Just my, my preference, really. And like I said, I, using the shots on the, on the rigs, just a bit of finesse. Wind, we're still in winter fishing, really. We don't want to be coming big, heavy floats or thick tip floats. We just want everything to be nice, simple rigs and nothing to go wrong. Let me talk to you a little bit of what I fed on the pole lines. I fed a good sized ball on both lines at 11 o'clock and at 2 o'clock line, around about the, about the size of a tennis ball, and then around about 50 maggots to go with. Through the five hour match, I'd top this up maybe twice, maybe three times, but not, not a big ball. I'd maybe just put a little pinch of maggots in with a small, like, tangerine sized ball of ground bait. Or sometimes I'll cut the ground bait out all, all together and just feed neat maggots. But because of the, the, so many different types of fish in this lake, I think, and the size of the lake, feeding ground bait just draws a lot of more fish into your peg, more feeding fish. So I, I just feel feeding the ground bait and the maggots, feeding fish in your peg encourages more feeding fish into your peg. And hopefully you'll catch a, a mixed bag of fish. What I tend to do, when, off, when coming off the feeder, or when the feeder line is just starting to die, I would never come off the feeder if it was one, one a chuck, just to go on the pole. Never come off feeding fish. So what I'd do, if, the, if the, the feeder line looked like it was dying or coming to its end, I'd have a little quick look on the pole, and maybe each line, I'd probably give around about 10 minutes at each line. It might be instant straight away, I drop in and catch a fish, or it might be up to that 10 minutes. But if I go on there, I can just work out if there is any fish in the peg, or even if it's a little bit too early. I might want to come back off it, refeed, and then return back to the feeder. And sometimes the, the fish can be waiting again on the feeder. Obviously, with a feeder going in a few times, it can spread the fish about. Well, just again, time of day. The pole line might be too early. What I spoke about earlier was that last 45 minutes an hour, especially in these winter months, the fish just come, at, come into themselves. So like I said, last 45 minutes on the pole can be really good. And this tends to be either short at six meters or even still sitting out here at 14 and a half meters. It's just having the confidence when they turn up to go out there and catch them. And just being confident they are gonna turn up. I've had some great successes here in the winter, especially going into the last hour, really catching nothing all match and then walking away with either a section win or a match win. But it's all down to that last 45 minutes. If you can plod along for the rest of through the day, either catching a few bits and pieces, an odd F1 on the feeder or something like that, and then that last 45 minutes can be the real game changer. I'd just like to talk to you about how my day is finished. Like I spoke to you earlier on today, the feeder fishing in the morning was really good. Moving on into the later day, I looked to fish the pole. But going on the pole after 10 minutes, with only a couple of little roaches to show, showed there weren't no F1 showing on the pole. After refeeding it and going back on the feeder, it resulted in two quick car, but worked out really well. And the bite was really quick as well. Two or three minutes and the rod was round. What I thought what would happen today, later in the day, you catch some late F1s on the pole. But with the weather changing and with the cameraman about as well, I wasn't sure if the fish was going to turn up on the pole. In the last half an hour, we've hooked three F1s on the pole. Well, it hasn't been too bad. It seems they've all been around three to four pounds. So really, three F1s in half an hour, you've got yourself well over 10 pounds. So that in, a, in match circumstances, it would be really good. A couple of key changes what I've done through the day. I started off with ground bait and, on the method and fishing with a couple of dead maggots. But I also had fishery micro pellets set up as well. So later in the day I switched to micros and the difference was massive. Quicker bites also resulted into some bigger fish as well. 
caught two calf fishing pellets. My crew has ran the method and a six mil banded pellet. That was a big change. I knew there was fish there when there was ground bait there, but I don't think the ground bait was holding the fish in the peg. The extra few micros in the peg holded it, holded the fish in and the bites was a lot quicker. We're still in February and it just shows how well the fishing's been today. Yes, it has got milder, but also it just shows how good the fishery is as well. We've had a mixed bag of fish from all sizes, the small, small F1s, big F1s and some carp. I know we're in, currently in lockdown, but if you, if you live local to Packington, come out and give it a go.